Tell me if you have experienced this before. You have a grand big idea. You wanted to set out to you know, start that new business or you know, uh, change your career or do something important. And then as you are excited for maybe a couple of days and then suddenly, you know, the energy sort of dies down and then you procrastinate and then you don't get started. And over time, well, you sort of go back to your so-called usual self. So how many of you here besides me procrastinate? Do I, am I the only one with this problem? Or does everybody at some point in a time in their lives will procrastinate? So is there a way to use metaphysics to help us, you know, stop procrastinating? Amongst the many requests that we get as feng shui consultants or parts of practitioners is, you know, how to uh, get my son or my, my kids more excited about their world, how to make them stop procrastinating, stop being so lazy, so on and so forth. Is there a magic formula for that? Well, there's not a magic formula per se in, in metaphysics. However, there are certain steps you could take uh, to help yourself or your loved one to stop procrastinating. Now, uh, some of these steps are metaphysics, you could use metaphysics, or some of you, it's just basically some tools on, um, you know, basically life improvement that you could use on your own, even without metaphysics. Because you see, the thing is metaphysics may, for some people is like, oh, you know, it's not so easy to learn and how do I know all this stuff? Well, you gotta read on it and find out about it. But besides that, the point is metaphysics is just a tool. It's not the be all and end all to everything in your life, okay? So there are seven steps that you could take either one of this to help you stop procrastinating. First step is urgency. So a lot of times we procrastinate, it is because there's no urgency to perform that task or that specific objective that we want to pursue. It's so not urgent. When something is not urgent, when we don't have the correct perspective of time, then you know we will probably delay it, right? It may be important, but it's not urgent, therefore we don't do it. So for some people whose uh, part of chart who is basically uh, hook up singer, you know, we say sometimes people are like, oh, I want results of yesterday. So you see a lot of entrepreneurs or achievers, right? They are, you know, they, they are they are expecting, you know, results very quick. They want things fast. They're urgent. Everything in their life is urgent. Okay. So this is one of the traits that I find that uh, is quite common amongst wealth structures. Okay. And or uh, especially indirect wealth or seven killing structures. So generally they have a sense of urgency, but for most generic general people out there uh they're probably not so urgent or don't have the sense of urgency when they are uh when they want to perform a task or a goal right so um you know some people say hold up you know ah, you take your own sweet time to do something they, they can be in the the shower for like 30 minutes to one hour and still can't even come out from the bathroom you know some some people like that now there's nothing wrong with it it's just that when there's a habit when you're habitually um you know your life is generally uh, without any urgency uh, in performing any task, normally you're susceptible to procrastination, okay? So uh, in such cases, on a metaphysics perspective, we would select days where it's going to clash with the chart. Yep, you hear me right. So clashes are not, not always bad, yeah? There's specific use to use so-called clashes or destruction in the chart to, you know, hit the chart that basically, uh, uh, figuratively speaking, um, cause the person to get some urgency that's why sometimes clashes are good sometimes you know harms are good because you get, you get a wake-up call right so um, you can uh, deliberately do this with metaphysics and or um, you could of course you, in your willpower you know make something urgent okay so you, metaphysics can help you with that so clashes are not always bad take note of this the second thing you can uh, do uh, to stop procrastination is to get emotional connection. A lot of times people procrastinate on a goal or a desire is only because there's no emotional connection to the goal. So they don't feel that they own this. They don't feel like they got this. Okay, so they're not excited about it anymore. So, you know, when, when you don't engage your heart, uh, it's extremely difficult to stay disciplined and motivated. So you procrastinate, right? So in this sense, if you are looking from the metaphysics perspective, you could use uh, certain combinations, okay? Combinations with the specific star uh, in Pazza. So we combine that specific star to, let's say the day pillar or even the hour pillar to connect with that person emotionally so that they, when they take action, they gain motion and momentum 
with the goal and they will continue doing it. So this is the second way of doing this. The third thing um, you can do, the third thing, step number three, is that uh, people don't start it's because they don't know how to start so they get overwhelmed. So one of the things to do is to basically help people to at least get a sense of uh, uh, control over what they are doing. Because a lot of people don't know how to start. That's the problem. I don't know how to start and therefore I don't start, right? So that's when in metaphysics, we look at the Chiman chart because Chiman is about, okay, I have this uh, activity. I have this desire. So what should I do? What's the first correct step? Okay, so the Chiman chart will tell you, okay, this is the next right step to take. Now, suppose you don't know this, right? You say you don't know Chiman, but you want to do it without metaphysics. Then just think about what's the next right step to take on your own, okay? If, if you see, it's very simple, right? Um, Let's say your goal is to make money, okay? Be At least be a little bit well, more well off than you are right now. Then you have a decision tomorrow morning, it's very simple. Is what you're gonna do today help you get closer or further away from the goal? That's your, your ability to, you know, knowing where to start. Whatever you're doing today, this is the actions of the day. Just think about it, right? Is it gonna get you closer to becoming richer or further away? That's it. So if you take that baby step, you know where to start. So start with the next right step. Suppose you have the, the ability to look at the achievement chart, then well, from there, it will tell you, all right, what's the next right step to take? It's as simple as that, okay? And the fourth thing you can consider uh, doing the fourth thing is to learn how to focus. Now, this is very important. That means every morning, do work first instead of check mails, check messages, and check everything else. The problem is we are always distracted with the so-called randomness of life. You know, some people say, ah, you know, I just take things random and be free to come what may. Now, if that's the case, you you will be susceptible to procrastination because you are waiting for randomness to happen. Well, sometimes it might happen in your favor, but most of the time it doesn't. So if you focus on work first, whatever, just spend the first two hours or three hours of the day, just do the work first and then do the rest of the things that is out to randomness. That way, you are closer to building this momentum that stops procrastination, okay? So if um, we're looking at this from a metaphysics perspective, we would look at, you know, your basic structure to find out what your profile is. And if you are, let's say, pioneer profile or a warrior profile or a leader profile, what is the top activities you should be doing on a daily basis? Once you make that a, a habit, you focus on that first, over time, you'll build that momentum to reach your, um, your goals, okay? The fifth thing, very important now, I taught this during the uh, life planning uh, blueprint class, is the hour of power. Now, the hour of power basically is throughout the day, there will be one or two hours that has auspicious stars. So in all the uh, calendars, there must be certain hours like that. And so what you need to do is, now that's not a long time, maybe just two hours. So focus all the important activities that you want to do on that hour and the rest keep it free. So we call it an hour of power. Schedule the important meetings, schedule the important presentations, the calls, whatever you want to make on that hour of power. So if you do this over a stretch of seven days, you're going to build up power over an entire week. That's seven hours of pure, prosperous, good fortune activities that lead you closer to your goal. So just do the hour of power. Okay, now if you don't know how to select positive hours, right? Then just do it in the first two hours in the morning. This is so important, right? And so the sixth thing you can do, number six is fear, right? How to conquer fear. This is important because a lot of times people procrastinate because they fear failure. Okay, they fear that it might not work out, might get embarrassed, I might not get the support, blah, blah, blah. Now, if that's the case, what you need to do is activate courage. Um, now, you can activate courage through your sheer willpower or you probably can do that with feng shui. There is a star number three, star three. Now, this, thing, this star for a lot of people who practice basic feng shui, think this is a negative star, right? Oh shit, why you do that? But this star is important because this star is basically confidence or courage. Courage is the ability to act despite of fear that you feel, okay? Now, you need to have a bit of courage. People say, oh, it takes, it takes money to make money. No, it takes courage to make money. It takes courage to take the first step. It takes courage to go and chase after the relationship that you want, the career that you, that you desire. So activate this, be in that area and do your hour of power or stay focused and do the important activities. That's what you need to do. It's very simple. So that's step six. And step number seven, this is basically have some celebrations, right? Basically, people need social rewards and uh, they need small wins, a celebration of small wins in order to feel good about, you know, making progress. So when you make some progress, 
celebrate, right? That's that's the star in in parts in in metaphysics. We call that the the Rob Wealth star. Rob Wealth is basically not losing money all the time. Basically, it's people come to you and say, "Hey, you know, you did a great job. Let's go and have fun." When you when you celebrate the small wins, it gives you the encouragement to go longer, go the distance. Okay, so these are the seven steps that you could take to help you stop procrastinating. And if you can add the metaphysics element in it, it will be much easier to achieve this goal of yours. Remember, get in motion, right? Get once you get into motion, you get into momentum, then you will stop, or you at least have less procrastination in your life. I hope this video helps you. If you enjoyed this video, please leave me a comment below. And uh, if you would like to see more videos uh, like this, go ahead and uh, put in the comment section and tell me um, what would you like to learn in, in terms of metaphysics. Um, and uh, put it in the comment section. I'll do my best to film a video just for you here, right from my uh, study table. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, click on the subscribe button and hit on the bell icon and don't forget to give me a like for this video. Thank you so much.